I just wanted to do a quick review uh, and modification guide of what I've done to it anyway to make it more comfortable to me. The 19 inch Husqvarna Carpenter's Axe. It's a, uh, it's a forged uh, a forged axe head. Uh, it's really nice. It's, uh, you can see the maker's mark perhaps uh, forged into the head there. But um, I purchased this primarily as a carpenter's axe. And so I've sharpened it sort of appropriately for me and I've modified it uh, to be used uh, for that purpose. Uh, one of the first things I did, obviously, is it needed an edge. I didn't like the edge it came with. So um, it uh, can get uh, razor sharp pretty easily. Uh, takes a nice, takes a nice edge. You can see that. And uh, that works pretty good. What I didn't like about this hatchet when I got it, I just found I wasn't using it. I was ending up using this this little guy, uh, which I also purchased for you know carpentry work, and mainly because it's just so lightweight, easy to use. And it takes a nice edge. This is made by Tabor, by the way. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty cheap $18 hatchet. But, uh, it, uh, and it's uh, interesting, you know, it's a very thin head. Uh, even concave too much in one spot. But, um, I find I end up using that more than this, mainly because it was just uncomfortable in the way I wanted to use this. So, the uh, first thing I noticed was, you know, I just couldn't put my, you know, thumb on top of it. One of the ways you want to use a carpenter's hatchet is, you know, in a chopping motion like this. With your hand, you're shaving, you're working things down to size. So, I needed to be able to get my hand up here. Well, the first thing, uh, the pole on this was really uh, terrible. It was just uh, rough forged. And it had a like a dent in here and a, and a raised part back here. And uh, I I don't know. I read somewhere well that was for pounding in tent stakes or something. And I was like, well that's just silly. Uh, I want a pole that's usable. I'm only gonna probably maybe drive uh, wooden stakes at the most with this. Maybe a nylon wedge or something. But what I really wanted to do was be able to put my thumb on top. And it, the the, uh, the shoulder here was just too high for my size of my hands, so I just couldn't get there. Well, I, it took a while on my belt sander to grind this down without getting it hot, and I have it uh, nice and flat now. And uh, and you work on well, what angle do you want that to be at with the angle angle? So if your hand is down here, I just kind of wanted it to be above finger height. So if it was something flat. Um, I wouldn't have to worry about smashing my fingers. And the next thing was this handle is so thick in here. Thick this way and thick this way. Uh, so I shaved this and you can see an indent in here uh, where I've actually taken the inside of this down. It was very sharp inner edge and it still is. But I've taken that back at least uh, probably an eighth of an inch, and then it had a great big knob on the back here. And if you have this, if you have this axe, uh, you can probably take it out and kind of compare to this. This thickness now is about two inches, two and one sixteenth inches from here to here, and it's about one and a sixteenth here. I think it was probably one and an eighth before, so it didn't take much off here. But I'll bet I took off quite a bit here. I don't. I didn't measure it beforehand, but it was just bulky. Now I can actually wrap my hand around here and put my thumb on here. Fingers fit in here nicely, and you can just shave, you know, on a piece of wood. Uh, I think you can see, you know, as you go to... It's just really a very nice way to work. Uh, work stuff down to the size you want. This should give you some idea of the size 
of the, uh, the Husqvarna 19-inch carpenter's axe uh, compared to uh, what you you might normally see. This is this is compared to that uh, that Tabor hatchet, which I actually really like for lightweight bark removal around the house. And it's something I don't really care about because it was cheap. So. Uh, you know it works for that use this is more when I'm really sculpting something and I want to use that um, this is a uh, broad hatchet and you can see how this one is sharpened um, in fact you might be able to tell by looking down at this side is like a chisel it's it's straight on the back of a chisel it's straight all the way down and the handle is actually offset so you can uh, literally shave uh, very close with this uh, to the log. I've actually sharpened it with a slight edge back just so I don't uh, Just so I can always come back. You can see how close I can get on my angle um, With that to take a shaving off where of course the backside you'd be you know way out like that So that's the broad hatchet And uh, and by the way, you, you, you know this one is really nice to hold. It's uh, you know to hold up here and work. It's just a really uh, good because the handle is so much smaller. You can choke right up on it. Here's a standard axe. So uh, you know this is like a 36 inch handle, I think. 32, 33 inch overall. 33 overall. And that's a, this is a splitting, this is a, a splitting axe. You see it's got a very, very fat body in here. And uh, this is uh, curved quite a bit, so it's really best used as a wood splitter. Very functional for that use. It's an excellent splitter. It's a heavy, heavy axe. So uh, that's it. This axe, this hatchet does come with a really nice uh, uh, blade cover. And it's got a welt, which is nice. Just uh, not too fancy, but actually it's, it's really nice and it uh, goes on and stays on. I like this uh, carpenter's axe a lot. And I think this would be great for bushcrafting. Or, uh, and if you did that, you probably wouldn't choke down or close this up so much. You wouldn't need to. You might even want to put a, a leather wrap around here to protect it. But it's not that heavy. It's, uh, I can hold it vertical, you know, very easily with a hand outstretched and hold it for quite a while. Um, it's uh, long enough that you could be limbing some things with one hand. You wouldn't have to bend over too far. Uh, whereas the hatchet like this, you'd have to actually bend down quite a bit. Wouldn't be as, uh, as heavy, but, you know, anything over about three quarters of an inch and you know you might have to whack several times with this where uh, the extra weight of the carpenter wax is nice so I hope that was useful if you if you get one you know you wanna uh, this comes un, unfinished which is nice but it's got a, a logo on here Husqvarna and it's got some warnings on the back uh, painted on sand all that down I think I sanded it down with up to 400 grit and then uh, multiple coats of um, linseed oil, oil linseed oil. You can see how they've done the, they did a nice job in putting the handle in. They left it proud here and uh, they, they sealed that. One, one thing, you know, that you, I don't know if you can tell the grain pattern on this maybe isn't the best. It's running at this angle. So it's not perfect. Of course, when you mail order, you never know what you're going to get for the handle. But it's adequate. It feels really nice in the hand. Um, this carpenter's uh, axe, I think I paid uh, $40 on Amazon. you got to watch prices. They move everywhere from $40 to $100 for that axe. And I think normal price is around 60 or 65, which um, 
you know, if you went into a saw shop and uh, and they have these, you could probably pick through them, you know, and get one with a, a better handle. Maybe that's worth it to you. Anyway, it's worth taking a look at. Um, you know, you might this might be a good carry for um, a cutter, a logger, uh, a feller that wants to um, wants to drive in. Uh, you know wedges, you know the nylon wedges, and have a, a backup. When I used to log, I carried this one in my uh, in my truck, and I was usually close enough. If I, you know, I was probably no more than a half a mile to a mile from my truck. So if I needed to, I could go to the truck, get the axe to fell a tree that uh, where I thought I really needed to use a wedge. Didn't use them very often. Uh, at all, but every once in a while you'd get an odd case where you get a a tree that looked like it was going to be a problem in where you wanted to drop it and you wanted to drive wedges. Well, that's what this one is really made for. You know, this is a this is a pounder. Use that to drive wedges, no problem. I think I would do that okay with this. Um, it looks like it's tough enough. It's a little thin in here. But if you're driving nylon wedges or wooden wedges, uh, I wouldn't have a problem trying that. Um, you could take something like this, but it's really pretty lightweight. So I'm not sure how that would do. Uh, this, so this is a nice compromise. This, of course, is a specialty tool. Uh, it's really uh, made for carpentry and... Uh, you know, using it for anything else um, just doesn't really fit into that. Well, I hope this uh, video was useful. And uh, if you're interested in this axe, I would definitely look it up. I think, you know, it's uh, with a little bit of time and effort, you can come up with a really nice, with a really nice tool for not a lot of money. And uh, it'd be an heirloom piece that you could uh, keep for many years.